the son of John Holmes has ever had Stephen Jones on four times on his show? Who in the world is Mark Holmes? Will somebody please tell me? My new way, back here. And so before we start this video, I gotta get this mother humping thing out of the way. Seems distant, strange. I'm gonna make him an offer. Mark Holmes is my head. Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great day. It is Taco Tuesday in full effect and hope all your taco dreams come true. We are sitting here, of course, with the Dallas Cowboys having a couple of their players as no-show. Micah Parsons is not in practice, as well as CeeDee Lamb. I will say that the uh, CeeDee Lamb one is a little bit different than Micah Parsons. Micah Parsons is actually doing some extreme training and conditioning that he feels will be better than what the Cowboys do. And we'll be there for the mandatory part of it. This is not a holdout for Micah Parsons. For CeeDee Lamb, that's a little bit different here. He is definitely protesting the fact that he has not gotten an extension and putting the Cowboys on notice. Now, the thing I will say is, is this. One thing with the Cowboys is, and I do not understand whatsoever at all, they will constantly wait until the very last minute to sign a contract they'll tell you we can't afford to pay people because you know we got to pay micah parsons we talked about this last year that's micah's money but at the moment i'm not sure that they're going to pay them pay him excuse me <coughs> forgive me i don't know that they're going to pay him this season would it surprise you if they didn't? <coughs> um, we got CeeDee Lamb on his fifth-year option. Now, the problem with this is, is when you sign a guy earlier, this is the fatal flaw about what they don't seem to understand with the Joneses. When there's still time left on the contract, what you're doing is, is you're paying somebody in today's dollars at the market value. Okay, once you understand, think about this this way. Right now, we're talking about Dak Prescott somewhere between 55 and 60 million, right? Well, it was 2021 that he got his contract that was 40 million. If you could have paid Dak Prescott that 40 million and it doesn't count until this year, then you're ahead of the game. But now, because there are no years left to kind of say, you're already on your deal where you're getting X amount of dollars, we're going to give you a signing bonus now, and so on, and then your salary number will be that number it was going to be now, and that number is reduced in the future. So as we sit here with C.D. Lamb, who could have been signed last year, Okay, Devontae Smith, who is a number two, he may end up being a number one um, age after next year. But at the moment, he's a number two wide receiver. He's getting twenty five million, twenty five million. C.D. Lamb and Justin Jefferson, interestingly enough, both of those guys did not show up for voluntary workouts. It's kind of interesting that both of them have the same agents, C.A. C.S.A. or C C.A.A. Um, management company, which is kind of like the two of them are basically playing the system. One of them will get paid before the other, and the next one will get paid a little bit more, but both of them will be the highest two paid receivers. And that is the reality of it is the agents are playing games. They, they, the teams don't really control this. The agents do. And I'm actually happy because that CD lamb, here's the good news on it. That CD lamb, a, wants a contract with the Cowboys, 
He's not saying trade me. He wants to be here with Dallas. That's the part that's lost in this whole thing that you look at and say, that's actually very good news. The second part of this is, is I'm glad he didn't do like Zeke did. Because what Zeke did was he did the workouts, the OTAs and things. He showed up doing good faith. The Cowboys, on the other hand, ended up not getting that contract done, in which case he held out a training camp, which was more important. And so now maybe they get this thing done sooner than later. But here again, going back to what I'm trying to explain to you is when you think about Devontae Smith getting an additional three years, $75 million, you say, man, how the Eagles afford to do these things? They're able to afford to do these things because they do these things. I want you to take a look here because here's where it's mind blowing. Because again, here's what I want you to understand. They gave him the $51 million guaranteed. They gave him a big juicy check right now. But the cap numbers, and this is all that really matters. Here's where it's crazy. Take a look. This year, his cap number, $8.1 million. Okay? The next year, cap number, $7 million. Seven and a half. The third year, which is really the first year of the new money, it's $10 million. The next year, it's $14 million. Not until 2028 is his cap number $20 million. But you see how they got it structured where they could let him go right then and there and save 16 of it and only take a $4 million dead hit. See, that is actually being able to work the system. The Cowboys, unfortunately, because they wait until the last year, you don't have those years where you can say, okay, we're going to keep that salary low and kick the money down when we know that it's going to raise up. And herein lies the biggest mistake that the Cowboys continue to make. Because now you've got three guys all at the end of their contracts and you don't have any room to play with the money. See, you could go through and you could pay Micah Parsons right now. You've got him right now at five. Let me pull up Micah Parsons real quick. Um, contract, for example. See, the thing is, with Micah Parsons, his cap number this year is only $5 million, five point something. And then you have the fifth year option. Okay, Micah Parsons over the cap. All right, so take a look at this. So what you have right now is you have Micah Parsons at $5 million this year. You do have the fifth year option, which I think is $21 million. Um, I want to say, I may be wrong on that, but I think it's $21 million. But let's say you give him the new contract now. You could keep that $5 million contract number right now, and you end up basically starting the clock next year. And that first year, you could make low and kick more of the money down the road. It's advantageous for you to do this now and basically say, this year is going to be a year that we're not going to go. go. And you're going to do it before the market goes up anymore. And this is where it doesn't make any sense for the Cowboys to constantly wait until the last minute, you know, with the players to do the contracts. It always ends up costing them more. It just does. Understand. Let me see if I can explain it to you again. If you still have time left on the current contract, you can make the guy the highest paid now, but you're not actually paying it for a couple of years, which means when that money starts going in, it's no longer the highest out there in the market. And see, that's what happened with Zach Martin. Zach Martin, he got his contract. He was one of the highest paid guards in football. But then a couple of years later, it's like, wait a minute. These guys are all getting a lot more money than me. I, I want some more money. Well, they ended up doing the contract over, but they got a couple of years in there where it wasn't as much money. And this is where the Cowboys need to be thinking more proactive than reactive on these contracts. 
I don't know what's going to happen with them. Um, I don't see Dak, CD, and Micah Parsons going anywhere. As much as the talking heads will try and tell you that that's going to be otherwise, they're not. They're going to get these things done. Unfortunately, I'm afraid that when they do get them done, they're going to end up being not good contracts because, as Jerry Jones always says, deadlines make deals get done. Well, they get done, but I don't know that they get done well. So let's end this this morning before I get ready to get up the road and do some more work with ESPN. To consider drafting a quarterback. Listen. If I am Dallas, I have to be prepared for him to go, and I have to look at the draft. I'd rather have Dak Prescott over, let's say, Michael Penix. But is he $52 million a year better than Michael Penix? I need an alternative because Dak could graduate next year. So to be clear, when he says graduate, which is a term, Robert, that he uses a lot, he means... (laughs) (laughs) Can you just make that face again? Sorry. You think it's just that... So it's that, it's that level of crazy to you? That level of crazy? <laughs> yes, Greeny, it's that level of crazy. If the Dallas Cowboys draft a quarterback in the first round, I would say that's organizational malpractice. Listen, for Dak Prescott, you either want him or you don't yes. want him. But what you can't do is say, hey, we're going to put you in this last year of your deal. You've got a huge cap number. We're not going to extend you. And we're also not going to give you an offensive line to block for you, a starting running back or a third wide receiver. We're going to say, go out there, Dak, and try to make it happen. There you go. Good luck. Now, if they can draft a guy like Michael Penix Jr. in the second round, yeah, I'd be completely open for that. But the last time my mama talked to me, she told me yeah, that my mom said- don't make a right. You hmm. can't not extend Dak, tell him to go play on this last year of his deal, and Amen. draft a quarterback who's not going to help him or the Cowboys win this year. It makes absolutely no sense. All respect to Mike T. Well, except that... It's exactly what Green Bay did once upon a time by taking Aaron Rodgers, and it's exactly what they did again by taking Jordan Love, and it kind of looks like the right thing to do. And let me hear where I'm coming from on this. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not up to the Cowboys whether Dak Prescott is their quarterback long term, or at least it's, it's really not up exclusively to up to them, right? He has yeah. so much leverage in this situation, Jeremy. If he decides, I don't want to be back in Dallas after this year. There's not a whole lot they can do about it. Yeah, Greeny, considerable leverage. He's got a $61 million cap hit this year. He's got dead money on his contract next year, whether he walks or not. Now, I did talk to somebody with the Cowboys who said the notion out there that they don't want Dak Prescott beyond 2024 is false. They certainly still see him as mm-hmm. their long-term option. But I would describe their negotiations so far on a contract extension as pretty passive. It has not been very aggressive yet. Nothing has heated up yet. But... Look, their tell this offseason has been spending zero money in free agency. They only have a few draft picks in the first five rounds. They have to fill a ton of needs. So they're yep. set up to pay Dak, CeeDee Lamb, all these guys. What do you think? The window to win is now. You, you can't pivot to a rookie quarterback. That advantage you get from a rookie quarterback only works if you are sure that that quarterback can play. And there's no quarterbacks at that pick that you are so sure about. Dak Prescott is in the prime of his career. He was the best passer in football a year ago. This is a result of Jerry Jones's waffling in the public, and now it's going to continue to play into your locker room because Dak Prescott is watching this show like everybody else. I'm with that. No, and, and like, again, and Dak, if you are watching, let me make it clear. This is not about you not being good enough. This is about <laughs> oh, you having put yourself in a position where you get to dictate something almost no NFL players ever get to do. Mm. He gets to tell Jerry Jones whether he wants to come back yep, or not. Yep, there you go. He As got I have about the, the Heineken River deck at Pier 7. There you go. Dak Prescott, he's got the juice. So there you go. All right, good people. We have a program note, okay? Um, This is going to be crazy. I'm not sure that we've seen anything like this, okay? One, you're probably like, why is that like purple? Well, for whatever reason, the camera makes it look purple. It's actually supposed to be blue, okay? That is actually uh, one of those Wi-Fi enabled light bulbs that's actually hooked up to some stuff that we're trying here that's going to be new. I've got another piece that is actually going to be coming through here, which will be kind of like a little ticker and when people become channel members or super chats and stuff it will put their name up there it'll light up i'm hoping it'll have sound effects but we're trying some different things here uh to to kind of have fun and stuff because uh things are kind of cray cray and with everything that goes on with the cowboys it's just like 
we need some other entertainment. And with that, Dan Celia, who literally said, I don't know who Mark Holmes is, him and I have actually been conversing uh, via text message and actually on the telephone. And tomorrow at 3.30, I'll be on his show. We will be simulcasting it here. It is crazy because I don't think, I don't think that anybody else has done what we're about to do. And this is Know Your Enemy. Dan Salio, Eagles guy. Mark Holmes, Cowboys guy. And we're going to try and look at each other's team and give our perspective from the outside looking in. I know we'll have all kinds of haters up in here that will be here. Why are you talking to him and stuff? Here's the thing. You need to know what you're up against. You want to know the strengths, the weaknesses, and everything about the competition. And also, it's fun because I enjoy seeing all the haters. And uh, we will definitely be having a good time with it. All right, good people. It's time for me to go to my day job. And I'll see you soon. Peace. They run. They laugh. I see the glow shining in their eyes. It seems distant. Strange. I'm going to make them an awful camera. Come on off again.